what's wrong with that theme song? Nothing. Again, I can't find anything wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, what's going on, man? Bruce. You, you're wearing a crisp white you. shirt. I am. You know what? I'm just going to say right now, apologies, and this is a faux pas. I went to put on my very important beer shirt, which you have <laughs> very appropriately put on, and I realized... Oh, look at it. Look at it. Look at it in all its glory. Yeah. Try, not, try to still pay attention to the shirt when I'm doing this. No, no, no. They can't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, go ahead. So They're what like, happened? You, your shirt has stains yeah. on it. Well, so <laughs> I went to put it on and it was actually, it had just finished its cycle in the washing machine. <laughs> so <laughs> so oh, it would have been very good. wet. And um, <laughs> as much as it's heating up in LA right now, and maybe it would have been yeah. refreshing. I think maybe a might have been a little too refreshing. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, man. So, how, what? How are you doing, man? What's going I, on? I'm doing. I'm doing great. I. I'm still. I mean, I have visions of being actively uh, employed. I mean, I'm doing little things here and there, you know. But I'm still really okay because I know this window. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is ever going to happen until I retire, whenever that is. I don't think I'll ever have this enforced, like imposed. Um, time that I'm not obligated to work and to be, you know, it's just you know, the intensity of all that, that we do. And even if forget about foreigner, I, we're all the same. We're all hardworking dudes, you know, like we just, we just work you yep. know? and, and we're, we're working now. I know you're doing stuff. We'll talk about it. I'm, I'm doing stuff, but it's just different. I mean, I really get cut myself a, a, a break on this whole thing and it's really good. It's really good. <laughs> It is. I mean, it's yeah. We we keep talking, coming back to the silver lining, right? Yeah. The mm -hmm. um the the silver lining of this thing. You know, we're housebound and we, we can't be yeah. on the road. Foreigner is on a, an imposed break. No one's yeah. touring now. It's just yeah. not a thing. It's not happening. Mm -mm. So um, yeah. I mean, everything's that's all disrupted. But what, what, you know, what's the expression, you know, uh, nature abhors a vacuum, you know, the idea that you have yeah, a vacuum right. in your life, right? Of right. space and what happens, you fill it, right? As yeah. a creative person, as a sentient being, as a, you know, as a musician, an artist, whatever, whatever your interests and passions are, you, things will happen, you know, that will bubble up and new projects yeah. and new, new collaborations, uh, you know, just new exciting things get to yeah. come up, and you know, and it's 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 a chance. That's a silver lining. It's a chance for us to explore those things, and, uh, and it removes all excuses for things. Hmm. Oh, I wish I could get to this and get to that. That's what it's done for me. Um, and so half the time, it's I'm actually really getting to the things. I, I'm a list keeper. I have a long term list. Some of which have been there for like m way more than a year. Like some things, uh, like studio gear things, all that. Um, mm. And then there's you know shorter term things, but. The fact is now it's like, you know, no more whining about, oh, I wish I could, you know, take care of that. I get in and I'm doing, I'm chipping away at this like long-term list and it's like shedding these really stale layers <laughs> uh, and it's just good. It's really good. I, I, yeah, I, I feel the same way. It's been a really productive time. It's been just uh, getting a chance to do a lot of things that I've been wanting to do, you yeah. know, and uh, yeah. yeah, like you said, no excuses, right? We're, we're, yeah. we're around, we've got all this time and... Uh, and you know, all the, the the being that it's a golden age of technology, in so many ways, that's a gift now too, right? Because imagine yeah. if you would this happening twenty five years ago, you know, yeah. as far as yeah. virtual collaborations, what we're doing right now, right? You know, being on Zoom together, you know, Zero. having a meeting on Zoom, you know, I had a track. Um, a, a production that I had that I was able to send you files and you put down some fantastic guitar stuff on it and you know like all this this collaborating that's happening virtually you know yeah. with the modern technology the gift that we have yeah. of that so so yeah. you know it's it, yeah we're locked down but we have these tools now that, that that are letting us connect this is good it's a good conversation but <laughs> you know I think we're gonna, we're gonna find out because we're not going to bring him on yet. We have a special guest tonight, a special outside the realm of anything we've ever done yet on this show. But um, but with two people, this technology works fine. There's no like, oh, sorry. I, there's, a, there's a little bit of, you can step on each other. But you start to get three people in and four, and it becomes really hard to be polite or, you know, to 
to, you know, you start speaking, you realize someone else is speaking, and then it, it gets a bit of clustery. So, like, the, you know, the technology, it's got, it's got a ways to go, man. It's, it's still got a ways to go, but we're doing good here. Are we not? We are, and I think, again, that human element of listening to each other and uh, mm. being sensitive applies, right? Because yeah. if, yeah. if everyone needs to, is dying to get their point across and doesn't want to wait, <laughs> yeah. well, then that, that's not going to work, right? Everyone's going right. to listen, right. listen right. to each other. Right, right. Um, yeah. So, so before, I mean, before we bring this, I'm just, this is such a cool guest we have tonight, but um, you've been doing music. You've been, you've been actually doing some cool stuff. You've been doing some fundraising, right? Yep. So what, what's, what's that about? So I, I just did a Facebook live stream and it was a fundraiser for Black Lives Matter. Raised a bunch mm -hmm. of money doing a live concert with a couple friends of mine, uh, Tina Terry and Rachel Ferreira. We did it right here in the studio. We were actually mm -hmm. filming using this webcam right behind us. Yeah. Figured out how to figured out how to get all my mics and audio gear into the Facebook live stream, which was a breakthrough technologically speaking, which was cool. <laughs> Learned yeah. some stuff, had to there were a couple little workarounds that I had to do, but that was fun. So we did that and real successful, raised a bunch of money for a cause that we the three of us really believe in and uh, so yeah, a lot, if that that that's sort of the most the biggest recent project that I've done, as well as some you know studio collaborations. Uh, you were part of one of them, and yeah. um, you know uh, we did a kind of a cool vibey, sort of down tempo chill version of "Paint It Black" by the Rolling Stones, and you you put some amazing guitar textural stuff on there, and um, some other assorted wizardry wizardry, which was. And we're shooting a video for that too. I didn't tell you. Oh, that's right. Well, truth Actually, be known, I, I, I meant to tell you that I, I want to get you involved in the video. I was going to talk to you about that on a separate. Do you have the paperwork? All, have you got the paperwork already? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll send yeah. it. To, uh, I'll send it to you. Um, yeah. So I was. I meant to talk to you because we're going to shoot a video for that, and I want you Lovely. involved. Um, you know, in a socially responsible, in a socially distantly responsible way, of course. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So that's what, what what's cool, been going man. on over here. So what about you, yeah. man? Tell me, you know, just, you know, I know we're, we're, we're anxious to get our, our special guest. We are, we are. What, but uh, tell uh, me just, you know, since music, yeah, over, overview what's happening me, in your studio. Yeah. I, I'm, it's, uh, again, I've now re taken away the excuse, um, the excuses and I've, t I've taken, started taking guitar lessons. I mean, really? there's just, there are just, um, there are, I mean, you, of course, as you know, uh, whatever you do in life, you never get there if you're like, nope. really, if it, whatever it is, I don't care what it is, you know, unless, unless it's like, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year and you make it, well, then you got there, bro. But I mean, as far as you're, if it's an endeavor, or, um, something artistic, like making beer mm. or doing music, you never, you never get there. So anyway, um, I have habits that I'm aware of because I'm not an educated musician. That I've had, I have habits that I've been trying to break. Well, I haven't tried to break, but I've been aware that I have bad habits for literally 50 years. Because I realized when I picked up the guitar 50 years ago, I should be way better than I am. So I'm like, man, we have months off. And I, I've been hesitant to take these things on because once you start dismantling and deconstructing your, your playing, if you have to be perform in front of a lot of people, you know, you if you can't rely on your instincts, you're kind of screwed. So you can't just break it all down and then go out and play a show in front of like, you know, 15,000 people. It's uh, it's, it's dangerous or it could be embarrassing anyway. Uh, so here's the time I'm just breaking things down and trying to rebuild them, you know, properly into, to, to shed bad habits, things that have just things that have blocked me from being a better to expressing myself better on the guitar. Mm. So I've taken a couple of guitar wow, lessons man. and it's like, I, I don't know if I see some doors opening the, the thought that I will, get to where I want to be in the really near future is, is that's not realistic. You know, it's going to take a lot of work and time, but um, I think if I get to a certain point and commit my body to it, it's, it's, I won't be able to turn back. So I'm almost to that is point it, where I won't be able to turn back. Wow. That's so exciting, man. Yeah. I, I, we could go down a, a whole other episode about that very thing. Cause I've flirted with the same thing at one point. And um, do you want to, I'm so curious because being a aspiring guitarist myself, me, it's my second instrument after keyboards. But what do you? Like, who are you studying with? Any, any, could, um, it's a gentleman I went to uh, a great source, um, a friend of mine, Tim Pierce, who oh, yeah. um, is one of the most uh, successful 
studio and just guitar players of the last you know 30 40 years and uh, he's now really put a lot of his energy into being an online persona and teaching yeah. educating and just being a, an entity an online entity he still does ton, as many sessions as he wants to do but um, he knows he, he interviews and has on his show great guitar players and educators and like teachers and rock stars kind of what we're doing a little bit but very much all about guitar and um, I know he would knew he would know the right guy for what I wanted to learn. So I went to Tim, and uh, this gentleman named uh, yeah, it's given a gentleman named Ben, and it's, it's great, man. I mean, he's he's kind of a shredder. I don't want to, I don't need or want to be a shredder, but um, he has the but, information and knows how to give it to people. He's a teacher. I mean, he's a player and he's a teacher, so he's just really cool at seeing where I am, and um, giving me you know walking me through where I need to go. It's so interesting. I mean, it is. It's a trip. Because it's I, humbling. I, it's really humbling, man. Oh Woo. man. Woo -hoo -hoo. I mean, you know, <laughs> I I went down that road for a little while, you know, many years ago, um, just kind of feeling like when I was playing a lot more jazz, you know, when I was yeah. feeling like physically, um, technically, I felt some. I was coming up against some limitations that I felt like just yeah. technically that I, right. And I went and saw a guy that was a classical virtuoso guy that had studied with this renowned Russian pianist, educator person, and came up in that tradition. And I went and saw him and I did some lessons with him. And he, he basically, it, it was humbling. I remember him just saying, you know, who were your teachers? And he, he, he told me, <laughs> he's like, call him and get your money back. <laughs> That's what he said to me. <laughs> that's, some, that's some Eastern European shit right there. <laughs> oh, man. He just, you know, I mean, you were talking about a guy that, you know, could, could play anything, you know, Rachmaninoff or the hardest um, classical piano concertos that you ever, you know, I never, my classical playing never got to that point. Um, it's just, I, I, I don't want, I feel like we could go so far down there, uh, but uh, but uh, that's really interesting. I think that's amazing that you're doing that, and I think that there, it seems like there's ways that you can do that, where you can explore that, injecting or um, you know introducing some physical things that that could you know enhance your playing and get you to a next level without having to completely deconstruct the way you play. I would hope that that's where you would go with it. Right. Well, I think the question is when you then when you need to just shut off what you've been working on and where you want to be and the stuff you've been working on and just I don't know just go back to your play. feelings. Just not, play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just play. Like you really have to shut off your brain out even more so. Like you have to do that anyway. But like, yeah. Wow. Because you start to let the things you've been working on creep in. It's going to be so bad. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. But listen, I, th th dude. We. I mean, we. Yeah, we we'll, probably we'll continue should that whole, discussion. We, yeah. we, this should be a pay for pay for view. I think we shouldn't be giving this away for free, right? This should be like, oh. <laughs> this is this is. <laughs> oh, there are literally. <laughs> there are um, ten, well, there are three, tens of people. Handfuls, handfuls. <laughs> only one handful of people. <laughs> one hand, one handful. Yeah, yeah. there is handful of, of, of people. People, there is fingers handful. of people. So, yeah. So we're Go, gonna man. leave that. I'll leave that wonderful discussion for another time, and uh, we're going to move on. We have a, we're, we're we have a, a an amazing guest today who is really accomplished, um, in the world of beer. After all, this is a beer show, right? Do we I hope. this is a very important beer. You know, we both both you and I have a love, and I would say even a passion for 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 beer and good beer and uh, discovering it, learning about it, and. Um, exploring and yeah discovering new beers so this guy um he's a master cicerone and i would imagine a lot of people listening might not necessarily right away know what a master cicerone is but a master cicerone there are only 19 of them presently in the world and what what, what that means if you become a master cicerone you've achieved the highest level of knowledge and expertise around the around beer and that is the preparation of the beer the the nuances of the flavors what makes each of the the styles of beer be what they are what goes into the preparation and the brewing of that style of beer 
the, the proper maintenance of, of the beer lines, the keg lines, you know, when you go into a brewery. Draft systems. Into, the draft systems. Um, you know, the things that go into spoiling the, the beautiful taste of, of the ultimate beer, of, of, of a well-made beer, the things that can go wrong, i.e. the draft systems, like you said, um, you know, the, the introduction of ultraviolet light through bottles can will 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 spoil the beer. Um, there's, there's there's so much oxygen. that goes into it. Oxygen. Um, all, all, all let the, him. All, all let's the, let him tell us yeah, about that. We're gonna let him tell him. So, so anyway, <laughs> this, we're gonna, he's gonna tell us all about it. This guy. His name is David Kale, or he likes to say Dave Kale. Uh, he's from Chicago, and he's a, one of 19 master cicerones in the world, as I said. So that's no huge. Bring him on. Don't cool. make us so, wait. Yeah, come on, Dave. Come with us. There he is. Am I on? Oh, right. You're in, baby. <laughs> we got a drink to that. What's Dave? going on, fellas? Yeah. Oh Dave. man! Yeah. Wow, Let's I'm just watching. I'm watching your out your 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 wrist, your fingers, how you hold a beer, how you smile. <laughs> I mean, everything. And like you're, you're you're like the master. Yeah. We're trying we're trying to imitate like the facial expressions. Like, oh, yeah. that's that's right. what a guy who really knows what he's right. doing does. Right, right, right. What's he do with his other hand when he's holding a beer? What's the other hand doing? I don't Wait, know. We might not want to know. We might yeah, not might. want to know. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah. Keep it over here. If it's a, if it's a Belgian triple, I can imagine what he might be doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dave, man, what's happening? Goodness. What's happening is uh, you know enjoying some beer with you guys right now. Love that, man. What We're else? Honored. What else are you gonna do during quarantine? I know. Yes. You know what's really great, which is like similar to like with music, and and beer. Uh, I'm drawing a correlation here that it doesn't matter who's the expert or who's the novice. The fact is the thing that you're, everyone's enjoying it the same. If you're an expert, I think you still enjoy the thing. Like music, I mean, that's what we do for a living. We, we still enjoy it. Um, and you're a guitar player, you know? And I mean, wouldn't you see that that's a fair correlation? I, I, I mean, these are things that are diversions from the hard things in life. And let's face it, this has been an awful year for, for most people. Yeah. And and music and beer are about the two best things to uh, turn yourself. turn turn that frown upside down, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. and I just yeah, I meant to say I, I was thinking of this earlier. I didn't say it. So everyone, everyone's you'll hear the beer bell there. There's a beer bell that's going to happen yeah. every time we hear. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, got it. Is there yeah. beer beer bell oh, the beer bell polka? That's about to hey. happen. Ooh. Anyway, continue. Go, go on, Michael. Carry on. Um, I was going to say, you know, Bruce has this thing that sort of dogs him wherever he goes in that people confuse him with other famous <laughs> rock stars. So yeah. so everywhere we go, I can't even I it's, it's probably in the hundreds now, you know, <laughs> of people saying to Bruce while we're on a plane or an airport or in a restaurant. Hey, man, I th are you Brian May from Queen? He gets that. He gets Brian May for Queen. That's probably at the top. Uh, Howard Stern Rob, right at the top. Uh, he gets he gets uh, Rob yeah Robert Plant from Zeppelin. He gets uh, Sammy Hagar. Um, see, there's some deep ones. Ian Hunter right. <laughs> you know, right. And, yeah yeah yeah. Anyway, so Bruce obviously has the you know he looks like a rock star. He is a rock star. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but Dave, you're Dave, you're a rock star of the beer. Yes. Because yes. you have gotten to an elite level of uh, achievement in that world. And so, yeah, so tell us a little bit about it. You know, I kind of, I kind of want to hear like, how did this happen that you ended up being one of 19 guys? That's a, well, the, the Cicerone match. program, you know, I, I don't know if you really mentioned it there in the intro, but the, the Cicerone um, program is the equivalent of the sommelier program for wine. So if yeah. people understand what a sommelier is, Cicerone is is the same thing, but just beer related. Yep. Um, good thing for me was that the program was started here in Chicago about 12 years ago. Um, so I was I was amongst people that were were getting certified and and the program founder um, I knew. So it got me in early stages of of the formation of that program. Um, but I owned a bar for about seven years and. People kept bringing me beer to, to try to sell to me. And it didn't take long for me to start realizing I knew a lot more about the beer than the people <laughs> selling it to me. And yeah, yeah. 
around then the, the Cicerone program came up and I was like, Hey, I, I don't know. I'll see if, see if this really can show me whether I know something or not. Um, so, uh, you know, there, back then there were three levels of the Cicerone program. There's the certified beer server level, which you guys are both and then certified Cicerone and master Cicerone. Now there's a fourth level in between certified and master that's advanced, but luckily I didn't have to take that back then. So oh, wait a minute, hold on. So you're saying, <laughs> yeah. So the, the guys have to, people have to work harder now. No, they just yeah, pay more money. Know. They have <laughs> to pay more money. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly because right. If, that's, okay. if you're, if you're a master Cicerone, you, 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 you know all the advanced stuff. So it's, you have to take one more test. <laughs> uh, right? Okay. But you, but you, you right, get another right. badge. You get another little badge. Okay. It was a, right. it was a way we were having a lot of people take the master test and not Failing, be prepared. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and there were a lot of people on the waiting list to take the master exam who couldn't take it, who might have been better prepared. So the advanced exam was kind of to weed that out. So the people that are taking master now are all pretty darn prepared for it. Um, but yet we still out of, you know, 20, 24 people taking it each year. There's like one person that passes. Man, so it's, really? uh, it's, it's like not, the bar. A, not a very high. It's like taking the yeah. bar, right? It's like you can't take it wow. a couple of times. It's yeah. a, it's most people don't pass the first time. I think I'm one of maybe three or four that did, but, um, you know, it's, it's a 16 hour exam over two days. And I think that, that's, I, I'm, I think that's what I want people to know, understand is like that, how intense it is. It's, you know, mm. if people think, you know, beer, they just want to let that roll off, you know, their back and not to understand how intense the, and deep the knowledge is that you have to master to, to achieve that, you know? Well, yeah, you've got to you got to write 25 essays in two days, which is pretty crazy. Wow, and there were there were four yeah. tasting exams in that time, too. In a way, it's kind of funny because I, I think that, you know, I mean, it, beer hasn't has sort of been traditionally at sort of a working man's thing, you know, like, you know, having a Budweiser, you know, it, it's Miller time, you know. It's like hang with the dudes or at the sports bar. It's not, it's not traditionally like you know, oh, a fancy thing. I'm gonna learn all about the intricacies and the nuances of beer. But the beauty with the craft beer revolution that's happened, you know, in this country and all over the world, is there's real need for that, for that quality control and for that knowledge and that and and all that nuance and differentiation that happened. And it's funny because wine, when you think about wine, the history of winemaking in France and, you know, in Italy and sort of like, it's a tradition that has, has been around longer. And what obviously beer has been around forever too, but sort of it's, it's, it, it's uh, per, the perception of beer as being a more sophisticated thing that, that requires a more sophisticated palate. Maybe that's a newer thing. And like you said, it's only been around for 10 years, right? The, the Cicerone program. Yeah, it's it's fairly new, um, as is the, you know, the craft beer movement. It's kind of wild. Yeah. You're saying, you know, we, beer's been made for 10,000 years Forever. and we're, yeah. we're finally we're finally making it right in the last, you know, 30, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. which is pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, I'm not going to knock perception. anybody who wants yeah. to drink Bud Light or something. If you like that and that and you enjoy yourself and that's go for it. I'm not going to yeah, tell absolutely. you that you're, you're wrong. Yeah. If you, if you like something, then, then, then enjoy doing what you want to do. But yeah. you know, there here, I'll tell you a story that got me interested in the Cicerone program too. I was in Florida one time and I was at a bar and I, I got a beer in a frosted glass and it was a beer I'd never had before. And I smelled it and it was, it smelled awful. And this was before Cicerone program existed. I smelled it. It just smelled terrible. I was like, Oh my God, I don't want to drink this beer. So I ordered a Sierra Nevada pale ale, you know, yeah. classic, great Solid beer. Choice. I know it's always great. And they brought it out. Same thing, brought it in a frosted glass and it smelled exactly the same way. Wow. And I went, Oh, and I smelled the glass and you could smell it that what they were doing, wow. they had a three, three bin sink behind the bar and they were washing the glasses in dirty sanitizer and throwing it right in the freezer and they froze dirty sanitizer on the glass oh my God. and it smelled awful. And it, and so I'm sitting there going, this beer sucks when the reality is the beer was probably great and the Sierra bar Nevada. destroyed it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, 
beer is so perishable that so many steps along the way can can destroy it and and we really the cicerone program is a lot about preserving the quality making sure that mm. the beer is in your glass the way the brewer intended it to be yeah that's probably why that's probably why beer hasn't been able to be hasn't been able to be refined until the last 30 or you know the last de few decades because wine gets better with age you can leave it in a, you know, as long as the temperature is consistent at a certain level, it only is going to get better for the most part. And that's not the case with beer. So for the last, you know, 9,500 years or 9,800 years, um, you know, beer, if you leave it set out, generally, it's not going to be as good as it was the day before. It's going to be not as right. good. Right. So now we, you know, we at least have distribution systems that if someone cares about a beer, you can get it from, you know, 2,000 miles away and it can be representative of the brewer's vision. But that's right. really wasn't that wasn't able to happen until the last 75, 50 years, you know, and no one cared or until a the lot last less few years. Than that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, back in the seventies, do you remember drinking? Uh, you know, your friend, your friend, uh, who's the engineer for this show from from Pennsylvania, yeah. was talking about Iron City beer, and you know that stuff was in a can back in the seventies, tasted like blood. <laughs> because there was there were no liners on cans back then, so you it tasted like rust. metal. Yeah, oh it tasted like God. drinking rust. Wow, wow. wow. man. Woo wee! Man, and that I was not my dad, long ago. Yeah, yeah. For me and my dad, was you know systematically made his way through the worst beers and cans. Like you know, there yeah. was Schlitz, you know, and the Pabst Blue yeah. Ribbon and all that stuff. You know, it's funny when you said the, you know, maybe it's power of suggestion. When you said that, I feel like I tasted the metal thing that you're talking about. Like when he would give me my first sips of beer. I shouldn't be outing you, dad, that you were giving me your kid <laughs> sips of beer. Look where it got you today, though. Old. Look yeah, where it hey. got you, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Okay, dad. Actually, thank you, dad. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah. But you know, when you said that, you know, who knows, psychosomatic power of suggestion or whatever, I, I feel like I tasted that metallic taste you're talking about in that Schlitz can. <laughs> well, so, so, Michael, listen, I, I'm, that was how you were drinking beer then. Tell me, we're, let's jump right to like decades later. Where, what are you yeah. drinking today? Because it doesn't okay. taste rusty, does it? I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> Ain't no Schlitz. <laughs> oh, that was my beer, man. <laughs> Oh. Ain't no Schlitz in a can, ain't that? Oh. It, it, none of that going on. So what ain't I have no here. Ain't no Schlitz like the one I got. Sorry. <laughs> don't don't <a> drink. Get that beer right in you. All right. So, so, so check it out. This is I, I'm I'm pretty sure Dave knows this, and Bruce, I know you do. It's it's a a, a little company uh, called New Belgium. Uh, they have a yeah. Voodoo Ranger Juicy Haze IPA. So yeah. a lot of a lot of people watching, uh, I would say that new, they're probably their most known beer is Fat Tire by yeah. New Belgium. That's the one that you'll see a lot in bars. Um, so this is one uh, that I found that I hadn't. I, I, yeah, I, I may have tried their Juicy Haze IPA before, but I'm really enjoying it. Uh, uh, new Belgium is based in Fort Collins, Colorado. They also have a brewery in Asheville, North Carolina. This is uh, a hazy. IPA um, clocking in at 7.5% ABV. Uh, very tasty. I, I, I like what they do there. I'm, I'm a fan. Um, it's, it's a, um, it's, what am I trying to say? It's not, it's not uh, conditioned. It's, uh, help me Unfiltered, out unfiltered. Unfiltered, thank you. Yeah. It's unfiltered. Uh, yeah. Really lovely though. Uh, I would say that, um, Definitely has a New England style going on to it. Yeah. Dave, would you like to weigh in on that? What, what are your juicy, thoughts? Juicy, juicy, hazy. I mean, that's yeah. the those are the keywords, right? Right. I mean, right. they're hazy, telling us. Hazy. It's telling us what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, hazy IPA is the the hottest trend of the last couple of years. Yeah. There there are countless, seemingly countless subcategories of IPA, um, which stands for India Pale Ale. If anyone was wondering at home but um uh the haze part is um is kind of interesting science but the main thing with these beers is that they've dialed back the bitterness yeah and right. they're they're they tend to be a little bit sweeter but they focus on hop aromas 
So mm-hmm. hops and beer, hops are the spice of beer. Hops give us bitterness in beer. They give us flavors and aromas. And we're really trying to get a lot of aromatics out of the hops um, for a hazy IPA. So one thing that happens is they'll put in, and I'll get a little scientific here because it's kind of cool. In If you're trying to really extract flavors and aromas, mainly aromas from hops, you put them in the fermenter. So late in the brewing process, you put them in fermentation tanks and it's called dry hopping at that point. I'm sure you can make a joke about that, but yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, I, I didn't, the joke hadn't occurred to me until you just said, "I'm sure you can." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So dr- dr- dry hopping beer, you put in the hops right in the fermenter, and you capture the aromatics um, without really giving bitterness to the beer at that point. Well, traditionally during fermentation, you've got CO2 produced. And the CO2 vents off out of these tanks. Well, the CO2 would also vent the hop aromatics right out of the tank and you'd lose all that great hop character you wanted to Mm. get. Mm. So they would typically dry hop after fermentation really slowed down. Nowadays, they're kind of capping the fermenter so it doesn't vent or doesn't vent as much as long as pressure is maintained at a safe level, you can add hops during active fermentation and the hops are getting broken down in a way by the active yeast that wasn't oh. happening before. Oh, and, wow. and so you're, you're liberating hop oils from components in, in, in the hop by active fermentation. And, you know, active fermentation, the beer and the fermenter is moving like in a vortex. Yep. So it's actually kind of pulling out more out of the hops than, than would normally happen. So these polyphenols, they're kind of like tannins in wine. Polyphenols um, come out of the hops and they form with proteins that are in wheat and oats and in barley, the, the, the sugar source of the beer. And they form visible hazy particles so that's where the haze is coming that's from where the haze comes from awesome and wow. it's all happening because of the science kind of of um of this binding of polyphenols and proteins during active fermentation and it's giving us a ton of these juicy aromatics which are pretty cool and i have to say like for people that are not maybe don't like the bitterness thing as much you know, but maybe, but like a full, like the citrus thing and like the fruity, the sweetness that, you know, a lot of the hazy ones are, that that's a good way to go. You know, you're not going to get, you're not going to get killed by the hops, right? People who say they don't like beer tend to not like it because of the bitterness. Right. And so I think you're absolutely right that a hazy IPA is probably something that could attract people who, you know, have an aversion to bitterness a little bit. It's a, it's a window into the IPA world where you're not going to get killed by the hops. I know that's a big problem. A lot of people just don't like that. So that's right. Yeah, awesome. So Dave, man, breaking it down for us on the scientific yeah, level. So, love that, so Bruce, tell, Bruce, tell us about what you're drinking tonight, man. Well, gosh, it's a totally different kind of beer. Yeah. Totally different kind of beer. And oh boy, is it delicious. Um, it's from Allagash, which is port in, uh, made in Portland, Maine. This is what the bottle looks like. So uh, I can't wait to get Dave's take on this, but this is a, uh, a bourbon barrel aged ale and it's a belgian style um, certain countries seem to be known for certain styles of beer that for various reasons but um, that's what's so fun too the historical cultural reasons why beer styles have emerged that's fun but this is definitely a belgian style um, it's a belgian triple and that ordinarily that most of the time indicates that the alcohol level is is high this is 10 percent. does that mean it gets you triple high triple that means i'm high. yeah yeah so yeah and just triple to know five. so so yeah I'm, I'm nearly done with this i had to I, truth be told I, I cracked this a little early so i'm I'm ready to kind of move on from this but um this is, is really a, really amazing this is kind of high is level like this a, is something what i was gonna say is that like a I, it's hard to tell from the orientation is that the 25 out like a pint plus another eight, it's a 750 ounces. it's a it's a pint it's a 750 mil uh okay yeah, nine, 9.4 fluid ounces 750 milliliters um nice. but um the, the i guess the thing is that it's a it's 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 a belgian ale 
but um, high alcohol. And um, they aged it in these barrels, which I've come to find out. I won't tell you how I found this out, but they actually char the inside of the barrels. And that's what releases a lot of the flavors that I'm getting. And once they age mm. it in those barrels, then they, they blend that with fresh uh, a- versions of the same ale, um, and which gives this final result. And I'm not, I think I probably could have pulled these flavors out, but I wanted to say that I'm, I, I read that these, I should expect to taste these flavors, and I do. Coconut and vanilla, those two are mm. coming through really, really strong, but not in a cheesy, overt way. Really, really elegant. Um, it's, it's it's absolutely amazing, and the alcohol content is is not to be, not to be uh, trifled, taken upon lightly. <laughs> um, so with that being said, Dave, are you familiar with this? I know you know this beer, and yeah. what are your thoughts about it? I'm curious. How did I do, buddy? How did I do? Beers. That's How good. I, do? I think it's great. Yeah, yeah did, for, for a certified beer server level, you know, right? You did great. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, <laughs> you know, the main thing is you love the beer and you're passionate yeah, about it, you're and right. that's all that matters. But um, you know, it's it's a fantastic beer. Curio is wonderful. It's one of the. It's a really innovative beer, putting a triple into a, a bourbon barrel. Um, and Allagash is one of the the best breweries in the world. Honestly, they they pretty much do everything really well. I was up there a couple of years ago and and just had a great tour. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I love bourbon barrel aged beers. Um, they're going to give give you some of the coconut and vanilla, vanilla notes, like you said, maybe some caramel. These are coming from the wood itself. They're lactones in the wood, and they also are going to give the flavors to the bourbon first, and then to the beer later. What's um, a lactone? Um, <laughs> boy, that's getting that's getting a little more complex. But uh, you know what? I, I or, I'd like to. Can we form a band called the Lactones? Yeah, they have to not be one, right? <laughs> we all play through really horrible sounding instruments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. But like well, lactose and tone, so that we have like cow udders that we play. <laughs> it has nothing to do with lactose. <laughs> oh, the visuals are just blowing. The, wow, that's so good, man. Wow, that's very good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. The lactose yeah. is good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's obviously a, chemi- a, a, a chemistry term. Yeah. Organic compounds, Org- yeah. 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 That, and, and in this case, they're going to give us a lot of flavors that uh, are, are uh, like we just said, those are the, those are the typical ones. Uh, v- vanillin is what you're getting from uh, the, the barrel. To, yeah. So the, uh, often the names sound like what they, you know, the familiar yeah. term to us. Okay. Okay. Well, it's just vanillin. fun. It's, that's, that's what's so fun. I mean, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a wine I love wine, but um, I'm I'm so captivated by the 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 process of the way beer naturally produces flavors. That's what's mm. so amazing. Once you get out of the Budweiser Miller Lite, which listen, if you're water skiing, this is I'm not I do not want to drink this out on the lake when it's 110 and uh, in, in, you know in Lake in Lake Mead in Nevada. I don't want this. It's just too intense, man. You, I want that um, that something rice light. that ricey light, you know. Just maybe very light yeah. beer. Four four percent ABV max, right? 4. If it's if it's like maybe. 30 yeah. 33 degrees, whatever the beer yeah. is, a 33 degree beer in a in a wait a second, in a cozy, which you oh, know, oh sweet, which oh. you know you could if you went to the uh, the the boneyard uh, rock, rock shop, shop. boneyardrockshop dot com, you could get one of your own uh, VIB. Michael Bluestein, Bruce Watson, VIB, cozies, not koozies. So that the next time you're water skiing on Lake Mead or the lake of your choice, or <laughs> yeah. um, you know, uh, <laughs> and, and you want to put your your your, your very affordable beer in it, um, yeah. And also, you can get these shirts at Boneyard, Bone, BoneyardRockShop.com. You yes. get one of these shirts as well. But you don't have Dave, to buy them, because, but if you want it, Dave, because he's a guest, gets one. Sent to his home. Right. Because, awesome. Yeah, yeah. He gets. But, some, the, some, he gets but the point is, there's a place. Every every beer has its place, and like I I would not enjoy sure. this this elegant beer out on the lake. I just wouldn't. It would be too. It just would not be the right thing. So Dave, we've been, we've been talking about what we've been drinking. I'm doing a juicy hazy IPA from uh, New Belgium, and Bruce has got a uh, Allagash Brewing Curio uh, Belgian Triple happening. So what are you? What's going on with you, man? 
Well, I'm I'm taking it easy for the moment. I got in my 18th Street Brewing glass from from Hammond, Indiana. I've got my oh. um, my yeah from your uh, one of your dude. We new, played there, goddammit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I got the Lizard King from from Pipeworks, which is a Chicago brewery. Um, great guys, and one of my one of my go to beers. It's a it's just a pale ale with mosaic hops, um, and and mosaic mosaics one of my favorite hops gives like notes of blueberries and oddly enough some like scallions and garlic and <laughs> yeah i know it's kind of crazy wow but Never uh, heard that. Ooh. you know it it's it's just a an easy drinking beer a lot of aromatics and and uh kind of in the hazy pale ale world huh. um, so i'm going with this and then i also got another one i'm gonna i'm gonna in a second here from Haymarket, which is a, we were talking about bourbon barrel age stuff. So this is a bourbon barrel age stout with raspberries. That's um, one of the, one of the great beers of Chicago land called Claire's, Claire's thirsty. What's the alcohol on that? This one ABV on that. uh, 12%. (laughs) I got to keep up with you, Bruce. Oh man. (laughs) I'll tell you what, that will get the job done, man. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, God. So I'll, I'll pour that one in this. The one thing I didn't say, I had this on deck. I didn't get to it. Oh, but yeah. I have a Russian, Imper- a Russian imperial stout on deck. Oh, made by who? Who's that, who made that? Old Rest that? made by North, North Coast Brewing. Classic. That, that's Bay Area. Well, uh, Fort Bragg, California. Yeah. Yeah, really good stuff. Nice, man. Oh, this is too much fun. The, the problem is, I don't think we, you know, we could do four or five hours straight. Not straight. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> right. No, we won't. We won't be straight, be straight yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I, here's the thing: I guarantee, Dave, we're, we're doing this again, man. N- not everybody has the the the, uh, the content to 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 warrant a second appearance. <laughs> we well, can just, always talk about so Are one of the few. Yeah, you're so much right more on. we want, want to talk about. You're, you're so fun and like, yeah. We haven't. Even, we've just scratched the surface about beer knowledge, and you you pr- you draw you roll it out in such a way. I think that. Uh, makes it easy for everybody to, to digest. Um, so we're going to do this again, bro. It would be my pleasure. Thank, yeah. Thank, Any yeah. Thanks for making it, man. And yeah. we'll, I'm sure we'll hook up on the road again yeah. somewhere. Yeah. You Definitely. Know? Um, yeah. We still yeah. got to make a foreigner beer too. Yes. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> whoa, what? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh. you may have heard of him. Dax Nielsen. Yeah. You ever heard of a band called Cheap Trick? Hello. Uh, yeah. Hello. Wow. And there's there's a there's an Illinois connection, almost Chicago. Wow, Dax, Did, do you know Dave? Dave Dax. Dax Dave. Dax, yeah, where are you? Good to see you, yeah, Dave. Good to see you too. I'm wearing your Look brother's sh- I'm wearing your brother's shirt. I got the Miles Nielsen rusted nice. home shirt. I love that shirt. I love I've that. Got, I've got my tr- I've got my trusty uh Dax, the law firm of Watson, Nielsen, and Bluestein. <laughs> Can I just say, for the record, and I've said this before, I think the Jewish guy should have been first, the Bluestein, because it just for a law firm, it just lends it more credibility. So just, you know, when we do the next printing, put, You're put right the about Jewish that. guy You're... first. I've, you know, I've, I've always heard it doesn't matter what you, like, you're like, you know, when you're playing music, it doesn't matter what you do with the whole set. As long as your last song is the best one, that's all people remember. So, that's oh, why, that's why we oh, I see. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, bring it up. Take it up. Take it up. Let's get, I want to get a. I want to get a, a photo of this. Man, I got this good stuff. There it is, man. I'm gonna there screenshot yeah. that stuff. So, so Actually, Dax, Adam will screenshot. Dax, that did too. you know that that Dave? So, we're still recording. Um, Miles Nielsen, who is the brother of Dax Nielsen. Has, is is a great musician like yeah did you know that dax that's your brother it's, it's, it's all smoking me it's all smoking mirrors they tell yeah but anyway miles Neal, uh, miles yeah. miles is a killer songwriter killer singer great guy not afraid to have a beer or a shot um and he, you know he he uh, has liaison with dave and they produced a beer what was it called dave rusted hearts lager come on Bye. Yeah, it was a, a local brewery here in Chicago called Buckle Down. Uh, teamed up with them, and and uh, I made that connection for them, and they they put out the beer. I'm sure Dax probably has had it more than I have, because most of it got 
it was a beautiful Me Mexican Mexican style lager. Man, I drank probably <laughs> Ciente of those. I don't know. <laughs> what was that number again? Uh, Ciente. <laughs> oh, <Ciente. laughs> that means the, the sit down. The sit down. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I Siesta. Yeah. I had Siesta of those. <laughs> So it's it's a a, a Vienna style. A Vienna style. Not lager? exact. No, well, okay. probably that's a good question though. Vienna lagers yeah. um were were something that kind of became a thing in Mexico for a little right. while. And it's it's kind of what Negro Modelo is sort of based on. I was on, gonna say. If yeah. If you yeah. had that. Um, yeah, totally. Because it has that car more caramelly kind of sweeter thing. Yeah. Malty. yeah. But today we think of a Mexican lager more like the Corona style, something that's. Uh, oh goodness. Yeah. Yeah. More more familiar that way. I don't know if I'm water skiing though. I'll I'll I'll, I'll put a. You, here's the thing. You have to have a lime in a Corona, or like a Modelo. Especial. Did you say a Did you say a line? L i n e. <laughs> no, no, no. What a, what a different what a difference what a difference a and, consonant and, makes. But they're just right next only, to each other in the alphabet. On, only on only on tour. Only on tour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Never. No, no, no. I, I can mess like on a hot day outside barbecue, like I like a Corona with a lime or yeah. or Negro Modelo Especial with a lime. Like there's a time and a place for that for me. Like I can do that. Like if that's the lighter thing, you know, you're in the sun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I can <laughs> exactly. Handle. The but, fact is, yeah. it's in the sun. You're light striking that Corona, which is why oh. you put the lime in it so that you don't smell it. Just to mask it. <laughs> That's so fun. That's we're, right. Listen, we're gonna come. We're gonna come back, and that, the types of stuff I think people need to know about is like why beers taste like crap. Not maybe the maybe a Budweiser when it's right out of the brewery tastes pretty good, but we're gonna find out why. Hey, why I think in Prague, I, yeah, you know, you have a Budweiser on tap in Prague, the Czech Republic. That's a good Budweiser That's for right. sure, right? That's gonna work. Yeah. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyway, we're so, going to wrap up. Dude. Dax, thanks yeah. for coming in, man. Dax. Oh, my pleasure, boys. Dude, dude. Yeah. We'll, we'll get I back to my your awesome. Fender Mustang with, with me. So. Oh, my goodness. He's only got a oh, couple sweet. strings on it, though. That, that only has... Are we going to jam? Are we going to jam, man? Wow. I got, my, I got my strat. Oh, snap. Oh, wow. It, this and is I, it. I, yeah, I was... Uh, I was I was showing Bruce how messed up my interpretation of long long way from home was. <laughs> no man, if you're feeling it, I want to hear what your I interpretation would... of his um, of surrender. I, I, I don't I don't I'm not that good. <laughs> you're from Chicago and you can't. Oh, you're not that good. Oh, because foreigner music's way more complicated than. Oh, did you hear that, Dax? <laughs> That's right. Hey, oh. I, I'm the, hey man, I'm just a bass player. I, I gotta I put play, the... I play one note at a time. Do we gotta what? sign out? We gotta sign off. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Okay, listen. Not only, not only a master cicerone, but a strat, a, 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 a strat axe wielder. Amazing yeah. having you, Dave. Our, our special guest, master cicerone, beer expert, yeah. uh, one of 19 people on the planet that has achieved that uh, merit, uh, Mr. Dave yeah. Kale. Thanks for joining us, brother. Cheers. Thanks Cheers. for having me, guys. This was yeah. fun. Yeah. See you guys next week. Dax Nielsen. Always. Thanks for having me. Cheers, y'all.